The price of chickens and eggs has gone through the roof lately, as I'm sure you're all already well aware. This is causing more and more people to look into raising their own flocks of laying hens and meat birds. I'm fortunate to already have 10 laying hens that are giving me four to five eggs every morning, so I'm not reliant on the grocery store for breakfast. I think that as more and more people raise their own flocks of birds and more and more people have to buy feed for those birds, that the price of feed is gonna go up. I'm just trying to build a self-sufficient homestead here, and it's hard to be self-sufficient if you're relying on corporations and stores to keep your chickens fed, which is the case in my current setup right now. So this year, I'm gonna try to take my current chicken setup to the next level and try to grow all of my chickens feed. And I think it's great that more people are trying to take more control over their food supply. I think it's nothing but positive for the world. Joel Salatin was on Joe Rogan's podcast a few years ago and he told a story about a town in Belgium that gave chickens to any family that wanted them. And in just a month, all of those chickens reduced a hundred tons of waste that went into a landfill. So there's a lot of power in more people having these birds in their backyard. I just think that with the current trend of more people trying to raise their own flock of birds that the price of feed is gonna have to increase. I just wanna be more self-sufficient and be prepared for a hypothetical worst case scenario where I can't go to a feed store to buy food or I can't go to a grocery store or a supply chain collapse, anything like that. I wanna have enough food that I grow myself and have control over that I'm at least able to get some chickens through the winter. They're just so important to a permaculture homestead like one that I'm trying to build. Not only do they give you eggs and meat, but they eat your waste. They'll build some compost for you. You can put them to work and I'll talk about how I plan to put them to work later in this video, but you can have them till up a garden area for you. They'll drop nitrogen all over the place and they're just awesome to hang out with every day. I didn't expect them to be as entertaining as they are. But it's not only an issue of self-sufficiency. I wanna grow my own feed so I don't have to pay for feed constantly. Once I kinda get my feed crops to the scale to where I don't have to buy feed anymore, it should be a self-perpetuating system that doesn't require any capital input from me to sustain itself. I'll be able to grow the feed myself, save the seed, do the same thing next year, and not have to constantly be pumping capital into a feed bill that seems to never end. And, and it's not only about self-sustainability and price, but also about overall quality of food. Right now, from my feed store, I'm getting pretty good stuff, but I would say it's like mid-tier, and if you wanna get into the higher tier, you know, top-notch, organic, high-quality feed, you're paying a lot of money. If I grow my own feed, I should be able to ensure that my girls here are getting the best diet and the most nutritious food possible. So that's what I'm gonna be getting into in this video. I'm gonna be going over my plans to become more self-sufficient and take care of my chicken's needs on my own land here and grow all their own food. So I should probably start off with my current chicken setup. And right now I'm in the cattle panel greenhouse that they have as a winter shelter. The plastic ripped off, that's probably why it seems a little dark in here. I had to put a tarp over to give them some cover from the snow. But right now I have 10 hens, like I said, and they come in here and hang out all day. They go back into their coop at night to roost and they also walk over there when they lay their eggs. And the cattle petal is nice because in the winter I can still pile up all of the food scraps that I get from our local grocery store. So right now they're eating their chicken feed that I get from the feed store and all those food scraps. Up here, it's about four months of the year where there's snow on the ground and they can't really free range. But those other eight months, they're gonna be in the woods, in their run here, in my orchard, and in my garden free ranging. So I think during those eight months, it's not gonna be as hard to feed them off of my own land because they can dig up a lot of bugs and worms and get a lot of protein that way. And I have 10 chickens right now and I'm planning on greatly increasing that number this upcoming year. I have a lot of jobs and chores that I'm gonna need my chickens to help me out with. I'm gonna be clearing some woods to try to turn it into some silvo pasture and I want these chickens to be a big part of tilling it up and fertilizing the soil and I'm gonna try to plant grass in behind them. I'm also gonna be using them in my orchard and my blueberry patch and my garden to free range and feed themselves in there and help keep the grass down. So that's where the mobile chicken coops that I'm gonna be building this year are gonna come in handy. I want to be able to wheel them around to wherever I need them and then they can take care of the rest. So now for my actual plan on growing the food. I have this space in between my garden and my chicken run. I'm going to start off by fencing these two areas together, connecting the fence, and I'm going to be expanding the fence into the woods. 
we're logging our woods right now and they're taking out all the trees that are bordering our fences here. So we should be having a lot more space open up here right behind our chicken run and my garden area. And I wanna fence off as much of that as I can. And I'm gonna pretty much be devoting a majority, if not all of this new area that we have available to us to growing crops for my chickens. I ordered a couple different types of corn. I have a huge bag of sunflower seeds and I also ordered some sorghum and some millet. I know corn is a heavy feeder, so I'm planning on using my chickens in here before I plant anything. Once I get it fenced off, I'm gonna let them run through here um, dig up all the leaves and grass or anything that's in here and poop everywhere and drop a lot of nitrogen into the soil. My plan for the long term is I want to kind of cycle corn behind the sorghum and then move the sorghum behind the sunflowers and just kind of keep rotating it that way. I just read that an acre of sorghum captures more carbon out of the atmosphere than an acre of mature deciduous forest, which is unbelievable. Sorghum is great for the soil. I'm just going to kind of rotate the corn behind the sorghum and it should really be a self-perpetuating system where I just rotate it through year after year, collect the seeds, and hopefully I'm not paying for feed anymore and I'm not relying on a, the feed store to feed my chickens and they're getting the healthiest food and diet possible. I just bought a cast iron corn chucker, so I'm probably gonna be devoting a couple days in the late summer, early fall to just shucking all of the corns when I harvest everything. I'm gonna have to build a box for that to kind of collect everything, but I'm actually weirdly excited for that and I'm really looking forward to having a huge stockpile of all these crops going into the winter. The only thing I'm worried about is protein levels and everyone says you have to have a certain amount of protein in the chicken's feed. I'm not worried about that the eight months of the year when they can free range because they're gonna be digging up worms and I wanted to slice up some logs and put them in my chicken run and kind of flip them over every other day or so. Well, plus I'm getting all my food scraps from a local grocery store, so they're getting a bunch of food uh, that way. But I'm, I'm more talking about in a case scenario where I have to feed them off of what I grow on my own land here. And I'm gonna have corn and sunflower seeds and sorghum for them in the winter, but they're not really gonna have that bug supply like they would the rest of the year. And I was thinking about raising worms. They die during the winter anyway, unless I keep them inside. That just seems kind of gross to me and I don't want to live around like a huge bin of composting worms, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. So I'm not exactly 100% sure if they're gonna get enough protein from the seeds. If any of you out there have some insight into that and could let me know in the comments, I would be greatly appreciative. And I can give them their own eggs, so that's a good source of protein. I can get creative and kind of figure some stuff out, but protein in the winter for me is gonna be the biggest hurdle when it comes to growing all my chickens feed. It's probably going to be a couple growing seasons to really get all of their own food. But after this year, I'm going to have a feel for how much space I'm going to need, how much seed I'm going to have to keep, and how much food they're really going to need to get through a winter. And if I plan on getting 40, 50 birds, whatever I end up with, that feed bill is going to be astronomical. So I definitely want to put a heavy emphasis on this growing area back here and producing as much of these feed crops that I can so I don't have to spend a huge amount at the feed store every week to keep my chickens going. I find this whole thing so addicting. And the thing I love about homesteading is once you get something set up, and you set it up right, it requires less and less input from you and time from you to keep it going. It's just so cool that I can buy this seed once, grow a bunch of crops, feed my chickens with it, and still have all the seed left over for next year and just repeat the cycle. And then after a year or two, I don't have to pay for any chicken feed. It takes care of itself. I'm growing all my own seed. I'm growing all my own feed. I'm growing my own chickens. I'll hatch my own chickens and I'm getting eggs every day and I'm getting meat from the birds as well so it just kind of takes care of itself and I can just kind of sit back and reap the rewards of all this hard work. So this is one of the first things I'm focusing on this year when the snow's gone and I can start fencing. They're supposed to be up here in the next three weeks or so somewhere in there to clear out all this area. So I'm going to be out here to see how many trees they take out and how much space I have. This is a huge stretch of ash trees. They said they're going to take out pretty much all these trees in here because the ash borer is coming through so most of them are going to die anyway and i talked to a woman and said you know what i plan on doing with my land here so a lot of these trees are going to be gone here soon and as soon as i can i'm going to be putting this fence up getting this whole area kind of figured out and then i'm getting my chickens in here right after that and letting them go to work and if i set this up right this is going to be a huge leap for my homestead towards self-sufficiency so that's something to think about too if you have your own chickens and you're trying to be less dependent on the grocery store for your food supply maybe start growing some of their feed and supplementing that with your current feed to keep your feed bill down and uh, be able to take care of them a little bit if worst case scenarios unfold.